so Nick, can you hear me all right? Yeah, I can hear you fine. And Martin, you can hear me? Yeah. yeah. Cool. I think everyone knows Martin, don't they? He's my brother. Bonjour. If you don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so Martin's a chef as well, and uh, also a nutrition coach. Though you do a bit of nutrition coaching, don't you? To be fair. A bit, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Mar Martin, you can just uh, I might just ambush you with some questions, and then you can answer them if you want. Questions are test your knowledge. Okay. All right. And if you've got any questions um, as I go through it, just shout out. Is there anything you like? Why did you sign on to this? Is there anything you particularly want to get out of it? Or are you just kind of nothing else to do? Um, <laughs> I just thought it would be interesting. Yeah? Actually, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I thought it would be interesting for us. Okay. Are you thinking of it more as a, uh, from a performance point of view? Are you talking to us? Yeah. 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 Sports. Particularly for Ollie. Although Ollie's, Ollie's good at... Um, but yeah, I probably have more weakness than him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no worries. And anything for you, Nick, in particular? Um, it's often a hot topic of conversation on our, our household with lots of differing opinions. Yes. And to be honest, my, uh, my knowledge is probably as rock bottom as anybody. I've okay. never had anything. Um, so just want to make sure that um, eating right, there's so much conflicting advice out there. Um, it'd be good to hear your view. Um, just to, yeah, not necessarily to help with exercise, but obviously that's important, but mainly for me, it's long-term, can keep losing weight. Yeah, okay. I think that's a, that's a pretty two important points that actually you just mentioned is that it's a hot topic emotionally for us to talk about food sometimes, because if someone wants to take away our chocolate, we get upset. Um, mm. So I think that's something to kind of bear in mind. <laughs> I'd be upset anyway. Yeah. And, um, and also that there is so many opinions around it um i'll try and be clear where where i'm giving my opinion and where things have been a bit more researched um one of the first things i'll say is that i'm not a dietitian and this is something that's quite an interesting uh thing to look at when when someone is talking about nutrition because a dietitian is somebody who's been to university and has done um you know a university course on nutrition stu the study of, of on diet basically um so those are the only kind of people who can actually prescribe any kind of food remedies nutrition coaches uh don't have that kind of depth of knowledge so my most of this is kind of based on what i do and i am a nutrition coach but to be honest anyone can go and become a nutrition coach anywhere online so you have to kind of be careful a bit about who you listen to and that's kind of why there's so much confusion around it because well the, there's you've got like confusing uh, opinions and you've also got the food industry itself which just confuses the matter massively because um you know they always they're trying to sell you stuff at the end of the day so mm. so that's just something to bear in mind as we go through it anyway anything you want to add on that spicy um i think i came on in, in a way to kind of share my knowledge to everyone as well and sort of give my give my view as a chef and how you can basically nutrition it's it's really easy to make healthy nutritious food and make it really delicious yeah definitely oh yeah so super easy it's just kind of knowing what to do isn't it for sure yeah um i'm just trying to see if i can stream this does anyone mind if they're streamed into the group i'm going to stream our no uh, that's fine see if i can do it i tried to do it just now and it's not playing so um nice. you can always turn your video off if you don't want to be looked at <laughs> <laughs> i like nick has right so is my video is my video off videos off no, no you're interesting. you're on the coast somewhere <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's chilling yeah. no i'm actually reading my emails now <laughs> multitasking awesome. multitasking right Cool. We're only in our group anyway, so it's nothing. Anyone? Are we not? Yeah. It's no one we don't know, actually. Right. I think that's. That looks like it's working in the group. We'll see. Martin, you can check on your phone if you want. Go into the. On the. On the should be on our Facebook group. So. 
we might get some questions in there. Okie dokie, right, so I need to share my screen to nutrition. Here it is. Um, can we see that all right? So there's a black screen at the moment, there you go. Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, good. Hippocrates, 431 BC. Let food be thy medicine. Oh, let food be thy medicine, and medicine be thy food. So, I I love that because I just think we've known about this stuff for so long, <laughs> and it's, and we're still so confused. It's just you know a bit mad, isn't it? To think. Yeah. Um. So a lot of this stuff, a lot of uh, a lot of like we said earlier, um, a lot of things are based on opinion. A lot of things um come from. I quite like the sort of yogic side of stuff where the yogi, like the history, very long time ago, they figured a lot of this stuff out through trial and error anyway. And I think a lot of it still works today. So before we go on, I just want to revisit this slide. If you haven't watched the, um, the mindsets uh, seminar that I did, I did, I've actually posted it on YouTube now. It is quite long, it's about an hour. Um, but I talked, I've sort of finally made all these slides up and talked a, a lot through this one. Uh, this is compound interest. So this is to say that even though you make really small changes, be it with exercise, nutrition, mindset, whatever, sleep, none of those changes are going to be linear in how they affect you. So they're only going to be small changes over time and they will build up over time and eventually there'll be really big improvements or or the opposite and it's to sort of say that nothing in life really is going in a straight line nothing is steady everything is always getting better or or slightly getting worse does that make sense so everyone think yeah. you've never seen that before anyway yep yep yeah um, but what we're all led to believe is that there's going to be a magic pill to get us to where we want to be there's just like there's only one superfood out there which is the best food and you need to buy it do you know what i mean that's what all the market yeah. says yeah. to us um, which is definitely not the case. Okay, so that's pretty much what we're going to cover in there. So a little bit about the industry, about, about weight gain, obvious, some fairly obvious things, um, but we'll just cover it anyway. And then a bit more in-depth micro macros. That's where we start talking a bit more about maybe some sports performance stuff. Um, okay, so what is nutrition? Nutrition is simply what we need to stay healthy and function well. And like I said just now, nutrition science, nutritional science is a little bit, is, is your dietitians. So those are the people who've studied it for, for a year or two. Oh, no, like three years at university level. Um, and whilst some things can vary, like depending on your age, your goals, there's a lot that's just the same for everyone. And it's a lot, there's a lot of basics that we try and everyone tries to do the really complicated stuff first when the really basic stuff is actually way, way more important than what protein powder you have, or you know, whether you're taking creatine or not, or whether you're taking this type of supplement. Um, those things are really, like if you imagine a triangle, they're really at the top of the triangle, when so much is, can be done down here. It's, um, yeah. Does that make sense so far? Yep. Yeah. yeah. So everything we have, every, every food has macronutrients and micronutrients. And we all need sufficient amounts of each one to stay alive and be healthy. Macronutrients is protein, fats, carbs. So there's just like big broad categories for, for nutrients. And then you've got your micronutrients, which is all that other stuff we hear about. So like vitamin B, vitamin this, vitamin that, iron, you know, all those things we don't really know what the hell they do. Um, but we need, still need them, okay? And if you're a dietitian, you would know probably what each one of those does, but I definitely don't. Well, not to a great depth anyway. So things that affects most of those are fairly obvious. Some of them might not be so obvious. So uh, obviously your recovery from exercise and injury. If you're, if you're eating poorly and you're eating foods which actually inflame your body, when your body is already inflamed from an exercise, from, from doing exercise or from being injured, the nutrition is not helping that injury or that the damage you've done from exercise to recover. So that's quite, that's quite an important point. Um, so something I'll keep kind of touching on is anti-inflammatory foods. They can be really awesome, like to help the body be less inflamed. 
Um, and it is literally like you have an inflammatory response. When you cut yourself, your body inflames. And that happens inside as well when you have poor like nutrition. Um, cognitive function, so your, your, your brain, how that works. And we definitely... I definitely feel, if I eat bread, last week I ate bread all week, all the week before. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> oops, I'm just trying to get into the group, right. Um, and I definitely felt, hang on a second, sorry. How do I allow this person in? Marek's coming in. Yeah, I definitely felt a lot more sluggish uh, than, you know, than I would do, when I, than I did this week. So this week I didn't eat any bread or, or Sorry, it's week. We're only on Monday, aren't we? Um, mm -hmm. Last week I didn't eat any bread. The week before that, I ate bread. I felt sluggish the week I ate bread, and and it, mentally as well. You just definitely a, a lot less. Um, I don't need just as an example, <laughs> Marek, are you in? Can you hear us? No, you can't. That's fine. Okay, obviously body composition, big one. The abs are made in the kitchen, kind of thing. There. Um, are you are you still seeing my screen? All right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely fine, Ben. Okay, cool. Um, I would normally say that nutrition and exercise are sort of 50-50 in terms of body composition, um, but I'd say at the moment it's definitely, you know, we've not been able to get out so much potentially, not been able to exercise like we have been able to. Uh, it just depends on the quality of your exercise as to how much the nutrition is going to play a part. If you're if you've got really like if you're doing really high levels of exercise like when ollie like if you're out on the bike all day you know how many calories you can burn on a bike just sitting there all day is ridiculous um but then if you're not doing that so much then the nutrition is going to play a big part and i'm not just talking about in terms of body composition but like in your fat and things but just in terms of health in general you're not getting the same sort of um, benefits from doing the exercise um immune function and disease prevention pretty hot topic at the moment isn't it <laughs> so yes that's uh, that's important definitely just having that sort of well-rounded diet um which everyone keeps talking about that's important for your immune function for sure obviously performance athletically and how you adapt to different forms of fitness so that's getting a bit in depth like if you're you know the type of fuel that you're burning for the exercise which you know, probably maybe for Ollie, that might be more interesting for you. Um, so making sure you've got enough carbohydrates throughout your training and things like that. So you can work it out if you know how many calories or how many carbohydrate calories you burn whilst you're on the bike to make sure you refuel. Uh, you're probably already doing that anyway, I would imagine, are you? On your long yeah. bike rides? Yeah. Yeah? He's got some, yeah. <laughs> you can get like, I mean, you can get all sorts of stuff, gels and things like that. I've got some here. Mm. Um, but yeah, cool. Right. Let's see where the next slide is. Anything you want to add, Martin, on that? Uh, no, I think you pretty much covered it. Awesome. It's like I know what I'm talking about sometimes, isn't it? Sometimes. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. What's the big problem, especially in the Western world? I would say not just the UK, but generally uh, in the West and Middle East now as well. Um, most people are not really thinking about nutrition. We're, we're really only thinking about am i full or not and that's you know, that's probably a uh, probably the biggest downfall that most people will have um 60 percent of the uk is overweight 20 percent is obese um being overweight increases your cardiovascular disease obviously and certain types of cancers one in three of the world's population is overweight one in ten is obese and the funny thing is that overweight and obese people also tend to be malnourished. So it means they're not eating the, you know, they're not just overweight because they're eating too much, they're not eating the right stuff either. And the other thing is, uh, so 19% of the UK children are classed as obese as well, which is also quite a fairly alarming thing, I would thought, because the more issues kids have, the more likely they're going to carry them on. Uh, later on like with their body weight and things like that and I don't want to sort of talk about being overweight and things like that too much because um, the other big problem out there is people's perception of themselves not being good looking or not like you know their their mental health because of their physical health um, is a big thing so we, I don't really want I don't really like focusing on how people look and that's with anyone who knows wishing fitness we know we don't do that we don't have mirrors in the gym or anything like that so 
and that's there is a reason we don't we don't have that it's just not good for you to constantly be looking at yourself and judging yourself by how you look um i think that's really important happy with that yep all good okay industry health and fitness goals are massively exploited by the food industry but also pharmaceutical industry um obviously they're making a lot of money um so the pharmaceutical industry are also the people making the supplements like your multivitamins and things like that so that's kind of another interesting thing um there's a lot there's a lot of deliberate confusion um i think i think that is my opinion around what's healthy and what's not um because you'll get things like you know i haven't got any examples in here but the bars of stuff which look healthy but then when you look at them they're not they're just full of utter rubbish really um or protein powders which are really cheap they look healthy but inside them they're just bulked out with lots of fillers essentially to make to bulk it out um and yeah it's just very it's very confusing does everyone feel that kind of same way yeah yeah definitely. yeah you can walk down the, sh the you can walk down the uh you know the shop and see all these supposedly healthy things when we have no idea but the marketing is marketing that's all it is and their job is to sell more of the stuff they're not really bothered about whether it really is healthy or not so i think that's you know that's a big thing um diets and weight loss so the muscle weighs four times as much as fat thing i'm not so sure it is actually as much as that in reality um but muscle does weigh more than fat so this is like this is where the problem starts to creep in when people are purely judging their progress on scales and like how they're looking and things like that so looking at the scales the weight is not the weight is not so important as how you're feeling or whether you're you know clothes fit as well or, or things like that um and diets are pointless really most of the time um it's much better to was that oh background noise so much better to rather than constantly going on diets which most people are doing and they're they're yo-yoing so they're going up and down so they get you know their body weight goes up and then they go on a diet and they come down but what they they've come down on the body weight side of things so because muscle weighs more and you, if you don't eat enough calories or um sorry i'm just gonna mute you uh <laughs> sorry that's all right if you don't eat enough calories your muscle is the first first thing to go okay so um if you're if you're pro judging your progress on on the scales that's also an issue does that make sense or run i feel like i might have overcomplicated that a bit no that makes sense no. yeah, yeah, it makes sense. yeah. I've, I've explained this to quite a few i've explained this to a lot of people um this yo-yoing thing but it's so deeply ingrained in us mm -hmm. that even though I've explained it a few times, it doesn't always, we still believe that we should look at the scales. And I really, yeah. I really think that we should chuck the scales away, honestly. I, I agree. I've never really looked at scales. I very rarely look at it, but a lot of people are fixated on it, aren't they? How many, especially, it's not just women to be fair, but a lot of people are yeah. daily, checking it daily. Um, and it, it won't. I mean, it will, if for women it fluctuates so much based on yeah. cycles and things like that. So, um, and you know, you can have a that's a kilo or half a kilo um, right there. So if I drink that, I'm now heavier. So it's only water. Yeah. <laughs> mm. so the scales are lying to you. However, if you do want to go losing fat, you do need to have a overall calorie deficit. Okay, so no matter actually, well, it does matter what you're eating, but you still need to have a calorie deficit. Um, if you enter too low a calorie deficit, then that's when your body enters the starvation mode and you enter that kind of vicious cycle of dieting. So you have this, we remember like the human body has evolved for millions and millions of years. There is not, we did not have this constant supply of food. We were, we are, adapted to have famine in our lives that's why a lot of people go on these um uh not diets what are they called uh, no oh, are you I'm just asking 
Fasting, yes. <laughs> and that's actually, that is a healthy thing to do. Um, <laughs> can't say I've done it, but <laughs> um, it's, it is like something our bodies are actually kind of set up for. Um, Interesting, Ben, actually I do that. I do do okay. fasting. Okay. I've done it for the last three months. Um, and I thought I'd never be able to do it, but I found it remarkably easy to do. Yeah. Um, really? So yeah, I, and I'm someone who loves the breakfast. Um, and I just cut out breakfast and I never thought I'd manage it. And I found it really easy and I felt much better because of it, would you believe? And I didn't think I'd ever say that. So I, I sort of have an evening meal, finish whatever that, try and get it done by about eight, half eight. And then I will only uh, drink liquids, have a cup of tea in the morning, maybe a cup of coffee mid morning. Um, I will have milk in the coffee, but with no sugar. Um, and then I have lunch between 12 and one o'clock normally. Yeah. And that's it every single day. And I have to be honest, um, I, it works for me. It may not work for everyone, but it works for me. Yeah, no, to be honest, I, I don't know a lot about intermittent fasting or anything like that, but um, I know that it does work. Toby's done a lot of it um, and he's, he loves it as well. So, I mean, it's something to, I think like Nick says, you know, it's not, maybe not for everyone, but to give it a go always to try these things. It's on my list of things to try. Um, He's a teenager. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> So, but this, in terms of going back to the diet thing, if you have, if you eat too little calories, which people do, they really do starve themselves, um, then you have this famine response. So your, your metabolic rate, as in like the amount of calories you're burning at rest goes down anyway. Um, you're going to increase your fat storage and uh, the muscle is the first thing to drop off. Once you've got to that response, then you fall off and then you have a feast response, which is where you you know, you start eating again, but lots more. And then obviously the thing that your body is storing is fat as a priority because it doesn't need muscle, it needs fat. The reason it needs fat is because fat per gram has a lot more calories in it. So per gram, uh, protein is five calories. And is that five or four, mine? I can't remember. I can never remember. The thing is four and four. Uh, fat is nine i think fat is nine yeah so your body is going to hold on to the most calorie dense thing to get it through that period of famine so that's why you know the yo-yoing thing is so bad for us because we just when we're going down on the yo-yo we're only ditching our muscle which is what everyone's trying to build everyone's trying to build tone aren't they so we're just ditching the muscle each time and then holding on to the fat which we don't want obviously some fat is lost but in the grand <laughs> scheme of things it's not it's not really the best way of doing it um and like that little stat down the bottom there within five years 95 percent mm. of your diets i'll be in a much worse state um than when they started all right how do we gain i think, fat? Um, I think just uh, another important oh, yeah. point to add on to the um like the fluctuation is that another reason why it doesn't really work is because people they'll follow a diet and you don't actually learn anything you don't and you don't um develop any new habits yeah. So whereas if you every every day or even every week, once a week, if you maybe think to yourself, how can I be a little bit better in this meal? Can I have even if it's just like can I have six cross sprouts instead of four today or whatever? Developing better habits each time, and it goes back to that compound interest thing. It's a little bit every day. Whereas if you just go right, I'm now I'm no longer going to have any sugar for the next six weeks. Then you go into this cycle, like you're saying, but you don't actually learn anything. You don't, you don't grow any, any in any way at all. So it's another sort of reason that they fail. Definitely, and also if when people do that, like let's just say it's sugar, which we know is not good, but we love it. <laughs> yeah. um, then people can develop like this fear around foods, and yeah. uh, you know people have fear foods like oh, can't eat bread. Well, you can just maybe don't eat it every day, every meal for the rest for the whole week. Um, you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Um, so okay, cool. Okay, so gaining weight obviously, we have overconsumption of excessive calories, that's really important, obvious thing. Um, largely inactive compared to how we would have been running around caveman days, drive to work, sit in the computer, tea and coffee, sugar in it. Um, predominantly 
uh, have a usually predominantly glycemic index. I think I should say uh, a high glycemic index carbohydrate. So this means that the sugar, the carbohydrates that we are eating are usually quite well, quite refined. So you know, white bread digests a lot quicker than brown bread, or you know, those sorts of things. Um, and sugar very high it spikes your blood sugar so quickly. So these things that spike your blood sugar really quickly. Um, the first thing you your body does is store it as fat. All those excess calories in your bloodstream get stored as fat. I've got another slide on this later, so I'll explain that a bit better. Um, obviously, drive back from work, and because your muscles are pumps, that's when the like the lack of energy is coming in. So because you've not used anything, and your your blood sugar's been doing this all day, that's why you have that like lethargic feeling because your body's just not working properly. It's just been sitting there and all your fluids are kind of pooling down in, into your legs and, and hips and, and, and all that sort of thing as well. Um, obviously highly processed foods is again kind of that glycemic index. Alcohol, yes, alcohol's a big one. Especially at the moment, we need to talk about alcohol because everyone's selling out of alcohol, aren't they, in the shops? <laughs> yeah. I didn't really foresee that, to be honest. Um, no. But the problem with alcohol is it's a poison. It's seven calories per gram, and those calories are pretty useless. Like you're not getting anything out of them. And you're also, so, so it's inflammatory. It's an inflammatory thing. Alcohol is inflammatory, so it doesn't do anything for your body. Um, it also affects mental health in a really bad way. So if you're feeling hungover, everyone you're not in like a jolly mood are you um so <laughs> obviously if you're having like if you're having a few drinks with friends that's very different to having a drink very regularly that's what we do most of the time that's the most important thing so alcohol especially at the moment i think i can't believe so many people are, are you know i can't believe the shops have sold out but it's going to affect people in a massive way this this is excessive drinking thing that's going on at the moment um, and the mental health that comes out of that as well is also mm. ex really sh quite extreme. Is there any, anyone want to add anything on that one, Helen? I, I didn't know, have they sold out then? I know oh, that... Um, it's, it's, well, not sold out, but you know what I mean. It's but like yeah, the, yeah, no, I didn't realise. I watched something, on, I can't remember what it was now, and at the moment that Boris said about pubs and clubs, pubs and everything shutting then uh, people went within five minutes there at the supermarket getting alcohol which i hadn't i hadn't thought about that either because we don't really have we don't uh, we don't have it really in our in our house for lots of different reasons but um um yeah no it, it's um and i think it's probably more prevalent isn't it the sales because yeah because there's no pubs etc are closed but it's um Alcohol yeah. has always been excessive, you know. Yeah. A lot of it, um, but uh, I I didn't know the link until fairly recently. I didn't know how obvious and how well researched the link is between uh, alcohol and mental health. That's yeah. a big thing that I think is going to fall out of uh, the excessive drinking or the home the home drinking the drinking on your own like that's Yeah, but. But Ben, I don't think necessarily it's everyone just binge drinking right now. I think what people have done is feel like bog roll. They've just gone out and stocked up uh, because they're very concerned that the red wine is going to run out in a month's time. So I think the cellars are full. But I wouldn't necessarily say everyone is downing uh, jugs of uh, wine and crates of beer at the moment. I think it's, well, yeah, fair enough. I think that generally without the pandemic, alcohol is a big thing anyway. Um, yeah. Also, like gin is a depressant. That's kind of quite an interesting one. Um, so You're all alcohol is a depressant. Oh, you get isn't it? Grumpy. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. You get grumpy. Anyway, he gets grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> Ollie, you shouldn't be drinking. You're too young. <laughs> get grumpy. Okay, right. Here's another big one. So stress. So stress usually leads to that comfort eating, but also. Um, it releases a chemical in the brain called cortisol, which affects your memory. Uh, it also is associated with encouraging fat storage. So, so if you go back to that, that famine response uh, that your body has, that's where your, your body is releasing that chemical cortisol <laughs> and, and what is associated. So it's like, that's what's associated with that stress response. So 
stress, your body does not know the difference between I'm stressed at work or I'm stressed because there's no food. It just knows stress. So if we're constantly in a stressed state, we're basically telling our body to, to store fat and, you know, uh, yeah, same as same as not having uh, food. Does that make does that make sense to everyone? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So the reason the tiger's up there is because if you get chased by a big scary tiger and uh, your friend gets ripped to shreds, it's going to be pretty horrific. Hmm. Chances are, you actually your brain won't actually remember much of the detail because your the stress, the cortisol, blanks out your memory. So. Um, when my when our parents moved house, my dad was very stressed, and he actually doesn't remember moving house because he was so stressed the whole whole time. He doesn't remember it. Um, and that's really? because cortisol was in his brain and, and how it affected his memory. So, also interesting thing. Okay, cool. Right, calories. We'll talk a little bit about it. How many you need is based on your basal metabolic rate. It's your BMR, the amount of exercise you do what types of food you're eating because then it affects how much calories you actually need to digest the food. If you've got more muscle, you need more, you know, your BMR will be higher. Um, so it's really, it's actually quite, you can calculate it. It's quite difficult um, to be very accurate with any of this calorie counting thing. It's also, again, like going to the mental health side of things. I don't really think calorie counting is a particularly healthy thing to do. It becomes kind of obsessive for a lot of people. Um, it can be done, but it's very individual, I'd say. If you have any, if anyone has any kind of uh, worries around it or mental health things going on, I would not go down the calorie counting route at all. Um, so I would sort of say, you know, you, you eat enough of the healthy things. Like Martin said, trying to make those small choices and the, the body fat will come off anyway. And obviously doing exercise just get the basics right that's, that's the main thing it's just getting those basics um I've, here is a benefit yeah it's a lot of, like a common question is what activity what exercise should i do to lose fat and the answer is anything you enjoy because <laughs> if you're moving you're doing something you enjoy that's a, that's a good thing um if you don't really care what you do then i'd actually do strength training and hit which is kind of what we do um strength training increases your muscle uh, bulk therefore you have more calories um, being burnt throughout the day so the more muscle you have the more calories you're burning just by doing nothing which means you can eat more and also if you're doing high intensity stuff then you get your it gets your core temperature a little bit higher um, and then you whilst you don't burn as much during that session you have this kind of afterburn effect so you actually burn a lot more calories after after that but um the downside of the, the HIIT training is that it's kind of, it's high intensity, so it can put strain on joints and things like that. Whereas if you sit on a bike for two hours, it's not particularly hard, uh, but it, it burns just a really steady amount of calories. Um, so you can sit on a bike for two hours and burn, what, 1,600 calories, something like that. Um, or you can do probably an hour of strength and conditioning or maybe less than that and you'll burn a similar sort of amount. So it just strains the body in different ways. So it depends on, it depends on so many things. It depends on like pain that you have in your body, whether you can even do that sort of thing, whether you enjoy it. Um, something that's sustainable is probably the answer to that. Are we happy with that? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, there you go. That's the next slide. Um, Zumba, if you love Zumba. <laughs> all right so now we're going to get a little bit more uh, into it so micros macros calories so calories does not indicate the nutritional value of food so we don't necessarily want to eat things based on the amount of calories are in it because you could uh, you know you could say say you've got a uh, 2000 calories to eat in the day or you could go to mcdonald's you could have this donut and all that you know that's you know, shit food basically. Whereas you could have 2000 calories of nutrient dense food and you're gonna get way, way more in terms of your immunity, cognitive function, all of those sorts of things, the anti-inflammatory effects on your body out of that nutrient dense food than you are out of chocolate and, you know, the things we know are, are not good. Um, but this, this, is a, this is a point that so many people are 
putting out there they're just saying just look at the calories you know there's a lot of famous mm, people sure. who are on social media at the moment just saying look at the calories as long as you don't go over the amount of calories you need you'll be okay and it's true mm. but they're only talking about body composition and body fat they're not talking about everything else that goes with nutrition you know cognitive function how you feel uh, all of that sort of thing um, so the easy kind of way to think about this is sugar so um, sugar really high in calories but um, delivers no nutritional benefit to the body so you can you can if you have this much sugar um, and it's a hundred calories it takes up that much room in your stomach and gives you nothing really apart from a nice taste that's that's more or less all that sugar really does for us um, and it also spikes your blood sugar a little bit as well <laughs> whereas if you have the same hundred calories of spinach or broccoli it's, it's a much bigger space and it takes up this much room in your stomach so you're actually going to feel way more full having the hundred calories of vegetables if you're just looking at calories than it is of, of something that's processed and small so there's another little uh, thing to be aware of. Does that make sense? Martin, you want to add anything to that? No, I think hit the nail on the head, really. Cool. Um, so we've got carbohydrates, fats, and proteins, like I said. Um, micronutrients and vitamins are all those minerals that we need for our bodies to perform various things, like vitamin C is good for our immunity, and vitamin B is good for our energy levels, you know, all sorts of things. Vitamin, you know, there's so many of them, we actually can get really confused over all of those. Um, like I said, energy uh, from alcohol is in fact a poison, unfortunately. Um, and we're just going to talk about those uh, a little bit more. So has anyone got any questions on any of that? Is that pretty all right? Fine. Yeah. yeah good. Okay, right. Here's the slide. Okay. So this is what happens when you eat carbohydrates. Now, also a lot of people out there are saying carbohydrates. Oh, I'm tonic. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, <love> one. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Right. Um, <laughs> I still have a gin tonic occasionally. <laughs> right. So carbohydrates it goes into your. Can you see the mouse? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. So carbohydrate goes into your bloodstream. Your pancreas produces insulin, which is kind of like a truck. And it takes the blood sugar, because it's oh. high blood sugar to take. So it takes your blood sugar off to um, convert it to the mu uh, into the muscles and into the uh, liver. So do the muscles need glucose? So it takes the, the glucose into the muscles to be stored as glycogen for fuel so therefore when you do exercise the fuel that's in the muscles and the liver is ready to go okay if that gets full or it can't put it in there because it's so much it's going to go into fat so that's why too much carbohydrates makes people put on weight does that make sense that's quite important that one yeah but carbohydrates are not bad always yeah it's just the type that we have, how quick that blood sugar, yeah, and the amount, yeah. And if, usually when you look at uh, a lot of people's, what they're eating throughout the day, it starts with jam on toast, and then they'll have like a sandwich at lunchtime, um, and then they'll finish with like, you know, the dinner, which is rice or potato based, so there's like massive amounts of carbohydrates throughout the day, basically. So just generally we eat quite a lot but not to say that they're bad it's just like you said we eat a bit quite a lot so when so the the question is how do we produce this thing that's taking the, the fat storage away uh this is glucagon now the pancreas can only produce insulin or glucagon one at a time glucagon uses fat stores to increase blood sugar levels so when low blood sugar level is detected glucagon takes the fat from the fat stores and increases your bloodstream so that you can do whatever you need to do. Has anyone ever done exercise on an empty stomach and felt like shit? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's horrible. That's because you don't have any blood sugar and your body's trying to produce glucagon. It's a really nasty feeling. Um, some people suggest that you should exercise on an empty stomach. 
I don't think so. That's my opinion. Um, maybe there's some research on it. I, I think that um, you can't really perform as well if you don't have any sugar in your bloodstream at all. And therefore, you're not going to get that longer term benefit from doing the exercise because you just can't perform so well. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the thing that happens, uh, the reason that people say kind of don't eat too much before an exercise is because if you've got loads of, like, let's say you've had a banana and it spiked your blood sugar, then you're, you're so full of what you've, you're using the fuel from the banana rather than from the uh, fat stores, which is what you kind of want if you're, if you're trying to lose fat, of course. Um, is that, is that cool? Yeah. Yep. It's, a, it's a sort of fine balance and depends on, again, what you're, what you're eating before exercise, if that's your goal, of course. Now, from a performance point of view, this is also interesting because if you can become fat adapted, which is a complicated process, which I don't know all about, then remember that per gram, you can burn nine, uh, sorry, per gram, fat has nine calories per gram, carbohydrate only has four. Uh, therefore you can burn a lot a lot of calories with your fat and even like if you're really lean you still have a lot of fat on you enough to run a couple of marathons back to back or something so there's enough fuel in your fat rather so if you can become fat adapted if you're doing long long distance stuff that can be really beneficial but we're talking about you know super long distance if you, i don't know what what kind of cycling you're doing ollie you're doing more sprint stuff aren't you no, no, it doesn't. It's endurance at the moment, aren't you? Yeah. Okay. So it may, you have to do your own research and, and again, try it out. But if you can become fat adapted, that is potentially beneficial. Uh, but we're probably talking like ultra distance kind of stuff. Mm. Um, and again, I think it's probably a little bit more individual um, based on, on the research. So most, most athletes will be doing carbohydrate and I... If you, can be, you, you don't just burn one or the other either. You can burn kind of both if you're doing an endurance sort of thing. Um, okay, cool. Anything on that, Martin? Um, no, I think it's important to say like where you've got the um, glucagon being produced. So you say you eat something before you exercise, your body will use that first. Yeah. Which, and this probably my opinion more the natural fat like having something small is good because you've got something to sort of start off on yeah kind of like you said and then your body will burn that fat storage afterwards and it will it will turn it will increase the blood sugar in the in the bloodstream slightly so it will still burn it a little bit afterwards as well yeah i think just in terms of pure enjoyment of exercise if you're doing it on empty stomach and you feel like crap you're not going to want to do it again um so i'd much rather people enjoyed exercise um, and start eating well rather than trying to do the quick fat loss thing which is fasting and trying to exercise and really hating it every moment of it um cool okay fat so fat is one of our macronutrients it's the major uh, macronutrients fat protein and carbs we've talked about carbs uh, um, you okay sorry that's oh, right. Um, sorry, actually, let me just go back to carbs a bit. What foods spring to mind when I say carbs? Pasta. Pasta. Everyone's got loads of pasta at the moment, haven't they? <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Right. Rye. Rice. Oh, rice. Rice. Yeah, pasta, rice. Then there's the carb. Potatoes. Potatoes, yeah, cool. So those are the obvious ones, aren't they? But what about less obvious ones, like broccoli? We don't really think of that being a carbohydrate. Um, sugar is a carbohydrate. Fruits, all fruits, carbohydrate. Um, and all vegetables. All vegetables, yeah, all vegetables, all fruits. So uh, yeah, we just don't think of them as being carbohydrates. Mm. Um, the reason is because the ones that you kind of mentioned are starchy carbohydrates. Um, so they're a lot more nutrient dense. So per uh, 100 calories of potato, no, no, well, they're just, they're more calorie dense per gram. So if I, 
if I eat this much potato, I've got more calories than this much broccoli. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. Okay. Uh, so the other thing with those starchy carbs, what I, again, what I've personally noticed, and the reason a lot of people are not eating gluten is because it does, it really slows you down. I, I, when I ate like bread two weeks ago for the whole week, just to, cause I like bread. Um, <laughs> I was definitely slower. And when I stop eating, uh, and I, it is the gluten for me, I think, um, it really does affect me quite a lot. And I'm not gluten intolerant, I'm not celiac or anything like that, but um, it's gluten is glue. And like that's what the, a lot of some people say is, is glue and it feels like glue in your body. But I don't know, Martin, if you've got a little bit more kind of, of a research opinion on that. Uh, no, I haven't really looked into gluten too much. Okay, um, but I would, I would strongly, especially if you've got any kind of autoimmune uh, thing going on, then gluten may be something to uh, trial taken out of your of your diet. Like rice doesn't have gluten in it, so rice you're okay with, potatoes are okay with, um, but bread is kind of the main thing for me personally that I really notice. I I slow down and I you know I just don't perform so well. Um, so when I do the Ironman, I'll definitely not be eating bread. <laughs> okay, right. Fats. So eating fat is essential to our body. Most people believe eating fat makes you fat. And that is not true. Eating, sorry, not enough exercise and excessive consumption of calories makes you fat. It doesn't actually matter whether it's fat you're eating or carbohydrate or protein. If you have too many, it won't be fat. So, what springs to mind when I say fat? Avocados. Avocados. Oh, I love avocados. <laughs> Anything else? Vegetable oil. Vegetable oil, yeah. You tend to think of all the bad things, don't you? When you yeah, think of that. all bad things, all bad things. Well, like cheese, which I love. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Or the dairy products. Yeah. Yeah. Nuts, seeds. Yeah. Um, fish, you know, meat has fat in it. Uh, all of these things. So obviously we've probably heard of the good fats, bad fats thing. Um, yeah. Also a little bit of a minefield of a subject. I think, again, just use common sense on this. Like nuts and seeds are clearly much healthier than your vegetable oils. Olive oil um, is all right, I think. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. it's olive oil and rapeseed oil are the best. Yeah. Um, what was that, sorry, Martin? Olive oil and rapeseed oil are the best. Best, oh, okay, yeah. Thank and you. I, I cook with coconut oil. I don't know whether you agree with that, Martin, but I think it has yeah. a higher smoking point, so it doesn't, it doesn't denature is it yeah. when you cook with it. Whereas olive oil, if you're using olive oil, it, it, you can't, if you cook with olive oil, it, it denatures. Yeah. So it kind of you, burn, you also burn the olive oil as well. You burn it. So, yeah, so rapeseed oil has the same level of what's called good fat as what olive oil will have. So you can, and the same with coconut oil. You can cook with them because they can have a higher burning point, like you say. Yeah. Whereas olive oil you'd use for a salad or a dressing or something. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a, the, uh, the good fats, bad fats thing is the... Uh, it was saturated and unsaturated, but coconut oil is a saturated fat, um, so it doesn't quite fit into the unsaturated, saturated thing either. So I think what it comes down to more is the processing involved in it. So if your if your vegetables oils if they've been highly processed and heated up and changed, um, then obviously they're not so good. Um, I've been. Uh, well, I'll, I'll go on to that in the next point, actually. Um, anything else we want to... Any questions on fat? Because it's pretty... It's been confusing. It's like we've been told not to eat fat for so long, but it's super important. It's, it's in mm. our tables, eyes, our nervous system. You know, it, it, it really needs it. Um, and when someone... And again, you think about, like, what's the standard stuff people eat? They don't actually eat fat unless it's butter. Um, and, and we don't really eat a lot unless it's... Or, or refined stuff. I think it's important to include it. Olives, also good. 
<laughs> Never liked olives for a long time. Now I like them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. Protein. <laughs> what do we think of protein? Very important. Yeah. Important. Yeah. Tasty. Huh? Tasty. Tasty. <laughs> Okay, right. So I'm going to just get it out there now. I've been eating like a vegan for a while and it's been great. Um, <laughs> so, really? Yeah. So for me, so protein, obviously what it does, it's repairing um, our muscles and um, well, that's probably the main function of it, really. Uh, it also helps this in your hair. Like when people start eating more protein, they, their hair, they notice it gets better. Their nails, again, gets better. Um, there's a, there's, you know, there is, uh, the, the amount we need is one of those hot sort of topics. And protein is a hot topic anyway, generally. Because why? Because everyone's trying to sell more protein to you, protein powder, and the meat industry, and, and all of that sort of stuff. So, how much we need kind of depends on whether you're an endurance athlete, a strength athlete, or you just are just a sort of regular, not, you know, keeping fit kind of person. Um, it's about a gram per kilogram of body weight, but that is quite a lot still. I, I wouldn't say I, I don't think I eat that much at the moment. Maybe I don't, I haven't really sat down and worked it out for a while, but, um, I have a couple of scoops of that protein powder there. Um, and then I just make sure that I'm getting, you know, nuts, seeds, those legumes and beans and things like that into my diet. And I have not eaten meat for six months easily, apart from a little bit here and there, nothing like what I used to. And I'm not like gonna preach about it, but I definitely feel better, <laughs> 100%. Um, I eat eggs occasionally, but just because I like eggs, really. I don't feel like they're so bad for our environment and stuff. Um, what, what's people's thoughts on protein? Do you have any like major questions on them, on it? No, I understand the importance of it. I'd like to, I, I thought, I'd like to be um, vegetarian, but, um, and obviously if, if I had like three veg yeah. <laughs> in my, <laughs> in my kitchen cooking with martin and that um mm. but i yeah but i think it de it depends on the family doesn't it and also um it's one of the emotional subjects that i was talking about protein yeah mm. yeah it's, uh, practicalities isn't it it's um e easy and as but yeah it yeah, it's a funny one isn't it so martin do you want to give us some ideas for a, a no meat dish but it's high protein, even though you do eat meat. Uh, the easiest, <laughs> I think the easiest thing to make would be like a vegetable curry, veggie curry with loads of beans in it. So like, okay. you don't even have to have loads of beans really, just use say chickpeas, and mm. one can of chickpeas is enough protein for two people for one meal. So oh. you've got a family of four, you don't need two, two tins of chickpeas, maybe two sweet potatoes, mm. and maybe with a nice curry sauce, Make, like, make your own curry sauce, super easy. Well. Yeah, top of it, a bit of rice. And then if you want to have meat with it, like you, like you say, you can always just do this sort of re-veg style thing at home and just, if two people want chicken and two people don't, make a veggie meal and then marinate their chicken in, say, the curry paste or something like that and then cook it and have that on top. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Thank you. I like curry, chickpea, and sweet potato. <laughs> Any thoughts or questions on that? So I miss you there, Ben. You just uh, went. Oh, I, I was just saying, have you got any thoughts or questions on uh, protein? No, no, no. Um, what you just described there is very similar to my household. My wife doesn't eat much meat at all. She eats a little bit of chicken, but not very often. Um, and often when we're cooking, I do most of the cooking, it's exactly that. Lots of vegetables, uh, she'll eat that, and then we cook up a little bit of chicken for myself and the boys. Um, so, yeah, the, and I, we, don't, we don't eat a lot. Of, well, we do eat quite a lot of meat, but it tends to be just chicken or um, steak. 
Um, don't eat lamb, don't eat any pork. Um, but I have to be honest, quite partial to the bit of bacon, though. That's the only thing. <laughs> I honestly thought I'd miss bacon a huge amount, but I, I haven't. Uh, I can't I, live life without a bit of bacon. Say, like, it's so worth trying it for... I think you have to really commit to it for about, I'd say, a month um, to really get past the <laughs> you go through a bit of a farting readjustment stage <laughs> fiber that goes into me. <laughs> but you get over that and um I, I honestly think everyone should try it just to say that it's not for them you can't say it's not for you if you haven't tried it i don't think and that's why i tried it because everyone's banging on about it so i was like right i'll try it and it is really good um just from a performance point like the inflammatory thing it comes back to that like you're right when you eat a big meaty meal how do you, f you when you afterwards you feel tired don't you mm, yeah so the reason that so many people are like you need to eat loads of protein is because if you have a hundred calories of protein you actually use i think it's 20 to 30 percent correct me if i'm wrong martin on actually digesting that protein yeah. So that sounds really good because you're like, right, well, I'm actually burning calories by eating calories. It's great. <laughs> but you're actually, the energy slump afterwards is, that's what it is. It's just you digesting that protein. Whereas I don't, I don't have that anymore. I'm just like, I feel like I'm burning like a clean fuel, if that makes sense. Yeah. So if you have meat, you're just like, <sighs> Yeah. Slows like down. the lions. Yeah, and now I'm becoming more like now I'm becoming more in tune with my body. That's why I've noticed the gluten thing as well. That's why I've sort of noticed that I oh, was happening with gluten as well, not really like burning the kind of clean fuel that I have. So, yeah, just an interesting observation that I've made. So, um, but that's why that's why everyone keeps going on. Oh, yeah, and traditionally it's been like just high protein diets. Which is not wrong, it's just the type of protein. And to eat that amount of protein that it says there, almost two, two grams per kilogram of body weight, that is a huge amount of protein. Um, really big. The, um, the protein powders I'll just talk about. So I sort of mentioned earlier that generally they're quite bulked out with stuff to make them uh, just bulkier, bigger, obviously. Um, this one here I really like. It's a, it's a from plant sources it's also got a lot of superfoods in it so it's got turmeric in it so turmeric is a very strong anti-inflammatory so you just get in extra stuff in there um that's nice and i just yeah really like the branding uh their um their company is like it's like eco-friendly packaging and all this sort of stuff so um i really rate that personally uh but and i said it disclaimer yeah <laughs> How much is it, Ben? It's uh depends on the size of the pack. It's twenty quid oh. for a small pack. Oh, okay, so, so about okay. excessive. It's probably more expensive than well, it is definitely more expensive than some proteins because it's got higher quality ingredients in it. Um, but yeah. Okay. Anything else we want to talk about on protein? I think I've covered all the main things. No, all good. No, yeah. all good. All right, we're nearly there. Okay. Um, right, free radicals, toxins. NME agents, antioxidants, you may have heard of some of those. Basically, your free radicals and your toxins are the, it's the, uh, well, toxins <laughs> that are built up in your body from uh, things like smoking, air pollution. Uh, I think eating meat as well. I think that leaves stuff in, in you. Um, and just eating bad food. So to counter that, the antioxidants and the anti uh, the anti inflammatory foods is is one of those things to focus on. So like your turmeric and your ginger and those strong like beetroot is really strong um, uh, anti inflammatory foods. So those sort of will counteract some of that bad stuff as well. So if you're thinking about like your immunity and your health at the moment, those are the sorts of foods to think about trying to include somehow. Like if you're making curries, it's wicked because you can get loads of ginger in, loads of turmeric, um, and You've just got a really strong, healthy meal there. Okay, is that, I was just gonna skip over this one a bit. Yeah, yeah. we'll talk about most of that. Hydration, uh, yeah, obviously super important. Uh, that's a, a lot of people are really 
not hydrating really that well. Um, it's yeah, just tr drink a lot of water. <laughs> it's pretty yeah, simple. Affects again affects a lot of things from your cognitive function to how hungry you feel um, and and all sorts of things. Uh, if you're thinking about performance as well, if you're dehydrated by I can't remember the numbers, but if you're dehydrated a little bit, it affects your performance a lot. Um, it's quite disproportionate if you're if you're dehydrated a little bit. Anything else, Martin, on that one? No, just yeah, keep drinking more. Keep drinking more. It's obvious, isn't it? Is it? I I think the easiest way is just to make sure you have a jug and then you finish the jug by the end of the day or something. If you're struggling with the water. Um, right. So master your nutrition. So there are a few points here. Prioritize nutrition over fullness. So think about how you can sneak in your ginger, turmeric, beetroots, all these sort of like sweet potato rather than normal potato. Martin, you can probably go for this. Go through some ideas that you've got. Well, how to get them in your diet? Yeah, how to how to prioritize nutrition over being full. So you can still feel full, but you've eaten like a better food. What I think just think about what you're going to eat before you eat it. Uh, like you say, obviously pick more nutritional foods and then also whilst you're eating, think about how full you're getting. Yeah. And yeah, that's only point. only eat until you're eighty percent full and then stop. Don't don't eat until you're full, eat until you're nearly full, and then stop. Yeah. Yeah. And also that's kind of touching on that being mindful point, isn't it? Because yeah. I'd say probably actually I've talked about nutrition and a bit more in depth about it, but the biggest thing you can do is be more mindful about your eating. So not eating whilst you're watching TV or listening yeah. to radio or having a, you know, argument or something. Um, that that would probably be bigger, more important than actually thinking about what you eat is more important than probably what you're eating because then you'll realise what you're eating is doing to you. Yeah, and you're not, you know, like you say, you're not distracted from the food. Yeah um yeah don't jump so worry about the basics first don't worry about coming in worrying about uh this sort of supplements and things like that a bit of protein powder is good creatine if you want strength that's quite well researched uh, it's probably the most researched thing is creatine and protein powder um everything else is a little bit out there so i, I like that i really like that vivo brand that's why i've got them in the gym i think they're great um and they've done their research um ensure you're eating enough protein but it doesn't need to be i don't think it needs to be as as much as everyone's kind of shouting about really um eat the rainbow it's a nice easy way to make sure you're getting all the micronutrients so all those di different vitamins and minerals because even if you go now and just make a really big salad but it's all green you're you're only getting what's in the green so it's simple easy way is just to make sure you've got all the colors in there just as much as possible um, Big bold salad, chuck everything in there, chop it all up. It's the easiest thing. A bit of olive oil, nuts and seeds. Good to go. <laughs> um, drink loads of water, sleep. Like we talk about sleep quite a lot. Maybe I'll do a seminar on, on sleep as well at some point. Um, a lot, you know, if you're not sleeping, you get that stress response and you get the cortisol. So um, also affects you. Take a cheat day. That is a day or even just a meal, not the whole Friday to Sunday. <laughs> okay. It doesn't start Friday night like we can have pudding every night. Um, yeah, just like, it's just, we always talk about, everyone always talks about what's getting balanced and things like that. Have a little bit of like stuff that you, you may be restricting a little bit that you normally have because otherwise you're just going to have that famine response and you're just going to, overdo it on those things so it's all right like i had to put in the other night it's great <laughs> Bit mm -hmm. of it's all right but it's just like what you're doing most of the time most of the time i'm eating ginger and turmeric and beetroots and like all the vegetables and things like that so um yeah and bread at the weekends and things like that that's, that's what we do um right that is it that is all i can talk about nutrition <laughs> oh thank you very much welcome any major any major questions or things come out of that or
No, it's a really good, um, a good, a really good overview and refresher for me, and some tips as well. I cool. think Ollie's learnt some stuff. Phil's yeah. cooked dinner in the meantime, which is great because I did that didn't start off that way. <laughs> <laughs> Long as it's low carb and high in protein, you've done well. Well, it, well, no, it's pork stroganoff. <laughs> there is coming, mushrooms, mushrooms and onions. And <laughs> I'm coming around yours then. Yeah. You can't social distancing. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. Leave it on the doorstep. <laughs> yeah, no, great. Thanks a lot, Ben. Really, yes. really useful. Thanks, Thank mate. you very yeah. much. Yeah, good one, Ben. Thanks, Martin. Thank yeah. you, Martin. Thanks, Martin. Thank yeah. You. Cheers, guys. We'll do. Uh, I'll do another. So you know, I'm going to do another yeah. one on Friday. It will just be the same one, but then next week we'll do something else. So, if we want to, if you want to think about what you want to know about, if it's sleep, if it's something sleep else. Sleep one. A sleep one. With... Yeah, I can do a sleep one. That'd, that'd be cool. Um, there's actually loads on sleep that we can talk about. I'll okay. Good. So, all right. Cool. Nice one. Yes. Cheers, nice. buddy. See yeah. Later. Take care. Bye. Bye. Hi. Just see if we're on Facebook still. Oh, definitely it works.